I want to talk about the Petrus bone anatomy and especially focus on the combined petrosal approach because um, I think the combined petrosal approach is one of the uh, most interesting approaches that you have in neurosurgery. The petroclibum in general is one of the most difficult surgeries that you can perform. So in order to get a good vision on how you have to think this approach, because uh, you showed an enormous tumor at a certain point, the sinopetroclibal meningioma with extension on the tentorium, and, and, and it's a mess if you don't, uh, to quote Fukushima, uh, if you don't you know, get a wide approach and take that whole thing out, that's not going to work. Even if you take out the whole tentorium uh, 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 via a retrosigmoid approach. So uh, you're going to have to think big, uh, big, big, um, uh, skull based approaches. Now, what I want to say is, nobody sh it's, not everybody should do the combined controls approach. It's not something that um, you have to use st standard, it's not standard daily practice, not standard neurosurgical practice. So there are a couple of specialized people that have to do it, and the rest, you know, stay off it. Don't just try this approach as, uh, uh, you know, try to, try to do it. Because it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very big uh, mistake. And why I chose the Peter's bone as the anatomical uh, um, important point today is because in houses, um, three of the very important structures that we deal with, with every day, uh, the carotid artery and its Peter's uh, uh, portion, the facial nerve, and obviously the inner ear. So in order to get a feel of how these structures uh, 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 get combined in 3D, we're going to take a tour of it and obviously with the sections from Rotan, Fukushima, and a couple of myself. Um, and we're gonna look um, at how these structures uh, are combined. And then at the end, we're going to look at Fukushima's uh, idea about the, trans uh, about the combined retrosal approach, how you're going to do that, and how you think about it when, you're, when you have a lesion. And remember, it's all about saving the facial function, saving uh, the, the uh, vestibular cochlear nerve, and obviously not uh, um, uh, trapping the carotid in your drill. So, uh, very simple uh, temporal bone, uh, five parts, well, actually three parts, but five according to Rotom because it's uh, easier to remember. Squamosal, mastoid, tympanic, uh, styloid, you don't see it here, and obviously petrosal, we're going to focus on this one. Um, and what you see here, uh, the uh, main point is the meatus and the, uh, side, uh, the sigmoid groove. Um, so we're going to focus on uh, first on the inside of the petrosal bone um, as seen through a posterior approach. Then we're going to look at it from a, a, a middle fossa approach and then uh, ultimately we're going to be looking at transmastoid. And what, I, what the, the purpose of this talk is to remember at the end, okay, how do we how do we think about the labyrinth? Uh, where are the semicircular canals? Where does the carotid go? And how does the facial nerve uh, travel inside the petrous bone? If we remember this, then your uh, approach to the petrous bone is somewhat safer. Um, you obviously see here the um, connection with the uh, greater wing of the sphenoid, so um, at the petrocardial angle and and. Let's just take a look at this from the outside of the skull base. So this is foramen ovale from, uh, from inside. Foramen rotundum is going this way to uh, the tergo-palatine fossa. Uh, V3 is coming here out in the infratemporal fossa. Uh, this is the petrous part, the carotid canal, and behind it the jugular foramen. And um, obviously what you also have to remember is the stylomastoid foramen, which is just at behind the digastric groove which uh, is the exit point of the facial nerve outside of its petrous uh, uh, bone uh, area. If you look at it from, um, from the external side, the temporal bone, and you blow up the external canal, then you see, without obviously the tympanic cavity, the round window, the oval window, the antrum, the spine of Henley, and the promontory. Now, what you want to remember here is these are all very important landmarks for your transmastoid approach. So you need to remember the spine of Henley, the oval window, and where the, antrum, the mastoid antrum is. We're going to see in a minute why. And from the inside, you obviously see the squamosal part of the temporal bone, the apex of the petrous bone. We've talked about that at length the last time on the Kawasi approach and how you're drilling this out. Uh, the tegment tympani, which uh, uh, is a thin piece of bone uh, on the inside of the middle of the above the uh, tympanic cavity. 
the place of the end of the back duct, we're going to be seeing that uh, in a minute, and, and obviously the petroclival fissure. So I guess you can classify petroclival meningiomas also in relationship to the petroclival fissure, but I'm not, uh, we're not going to go into that because uh, the petroclival meningiomas is not the purpose of this talk. The purpose of this talk is to build up anatomical landmarks and get a view of the combined petroxyl approach. So if you're looking at from the inside, uh, the, uh, the internal um, side of the petrous bone, you see a couple of landmarks which you should always keep in mind. The internal acoustic meatus, um, uh, you've obviously seen the supermeatal uh, tubercle being drilled uh, in the film from Christina, a subarcuate fossa in which the subarcuate artery enters and uh, ends blindly in bone. The exit of the endolymphatic duct, which <coughs> Uh, happens underneath a uh, very s a shallow limbus of bone. The endolymphatic duct connects with the uh, membranous labyrinth uh, with the intricular and sacular ducts and it's been used to treat um, intractable Meniere syndrome where patients get very dizzy and at a certain point they, 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 there's nothing that can be done for them. So they, uh, the uh, ENT doctors, they thought they could ligate or open this in a sort of endolymphatic uh, hypertension syndrome. Um, but what they found out is when they, uh, when they compared this to a placebo, it's actually a placebo surgery. So um, there's no such thing as an endolymphatic, uh, like there are no ENT doctors here, because uh, otherwise I'd uh, probably get a lot of uh, attention from them, but uh, there's no such thing as endolymphatic uh, uh, hypertension syndrome, just uh, for, your, for your knowledge. But it's, it's I mean, the, the patients, they recover miraculously, 80% uh, good results with surgery uh, with, with the uh, dizziness disappearing uh, the, the, the day after surgery was uh, uh, funny. So <clears throat> the jugular foramen, which is about, I told you in the last um, evening seminars, that it's about <coughs> 1.1 uh, centimeters away from uh, the internal meatus. That's from the study of uh, Professor Lang from Würzburg, who uh, has always been uh, a fan of skull base anatomy. And uh, what you should also see is the cochlear vestibular aqueducts which open here uh, on the side of the Peter's bone. Um, if we add dura uh, and, and nerves, we see obviously the, the, the nerves which are entering seven uh, intermediates uh, in the vestibular cochlear complex and the, in the jugular foramen nine that enters above 10 and 11 uh, and is also separated by them through this fibrous uh, which would, makes it uh, a, a, a different uh, glossopharyngeal foramen um, out of this. Now, I want to ask you something. What, what, what did Roton drill into here? What, what is this? We're going to talk about canals now. So um, the question is, what, what did he drill into here? So this is meatus. Uh, you're going to have the canals here, posteriorly, and more uh, uh, laterally. So what did he drill to, into here? This is a very important landmark for when you're doing a retro lab or a, a trans lab. This is a common cruise, which is, uh, this is arcuate fossa, so that's uh, the, um, the eminence in the, uh, in the floor of the middle fossa where the superior uh, 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 internal canal, uh, semicircular canal uh, um, is seen and if you see the back side of the superior canal and the upside of the posterior canal that's a common cruise and that's just a connection between those two canals but it's a very important landmark for when you're doing a, a, a trans lab approach you're going to see that in a minute now if we focus a bit on the meatus i think everybody knows this already because we've said it i think a, a thousand times so it's a transverse or falciform crest which is separating the superior and inferior sides and then there's this vertical crest which is also called Bill's Bar and it's called Bill's Bar uh, because William House that was a very big, uh, uh, very great uh, ENT surgeon in the 60s which also introduced the microscope uh, operating and, and, and more drilling, drilling, drilling uh, so the skull based surgeons, uh, even if, if they're neurosurgeons, they see William House as a, uh, a very big uh, figure, uh, even if he's not a neurosurgeon uh, like we are. But I, 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 I also want to mention this, if you're in Italy before though, um, if you're in, uh, in Rome and there's Mario Sana, who's uh, one of the EMT surgeons there, then as a neurosurgeon you're not even going to touch skull base. He's going to do everything, detachment from the brainstem, you don't even touch uh, the skull base because he's so good and he can do that so he's an actual skull base I mean, and that, that's also a bit weird if you ask me 
um, uh, that, that, that a knee and knee surgeon is, is, is peeling off tumors from a brain stem, but that, you know, that's, that, that, that it can happen. So uh, if, if you're an ENT surgeon, it's not really, uh, and, and you're specializing in skull base, that doesn't mean you're inferior to a neurosurgeon. So um, a vertical crest builds bar, and this separates the four areas which you already know, the facial canal, <coughs> superior vestibular, inferior vestibular, and cochlear. And you can see all these little points. So the cochlear nerve spreads in uh, 10 to 20 very fine fibers. So if you retract the cerebellum too laterally, then you might uh, uh, tear these away and the patient will lose hearing. Um, now if you drill further out these, uh, these places, then you see uh, the inferior vestibular area with the singular foramen. And we're going to see in a minute why that's so important. Now once you drill more into here, you see again the common cruise I showed you before, the endolymphatic duct, which goes from the vestibule uh, and ends blindly in the endolymphatic sac. And if you uh, drill uh, more into the meatus, you can see the superior vestibular nerve, the inferior vestibular with the ventricular and sacular branches and the singular nerve. And that's important because the superior vestibular nerve, well, I'm not sure if you know this uh, anymore, all the semicircular canals have been ambulated and non-ambulated. In the ambulated end, they also have the receptor. So the nerve has to go to the ambulated end. Now, the utricle and sacral in the vestibule, they also have receptors, so they also need to get nerves. Now, the utricle the also has some uh, a branch of the superior vestibular, but the sacral also has uh, a branch of the inferior vestibular, and the semicircular canals are uh, innervated, um, the superior and um, uh, and lateral ones were the superior vestibular nerve and the, uh, uh, the uh, posterior one by the inferior vestibular nerve by the singular branch. That's why the singular branch is very important. So you need to uh, 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 point this out uh, uh, when you're uh, talking about the vestibule. Now if you drill further along um, the inside of the uh, petrous bone, you see the petrous carotid, sixth nerve going to the Rolls canals, inferior petrosal sinus, superior petrosal sinus, and in between are all the important landmarks that we're always talking about when we're talking about uh, 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 middle fossa and posterior fossa. So uh, further along um, into the meatus, we've drilled the meatus out totally, uh, actually Rotan and his fellows, uh, cochlear nerve seventh going to um, the facial nerve foramen, the vestibule, and the canals, and you can see them here um, blown up. So you can see the ambulated ends of the superior and lateral canals, uh, which are being innervated by uh, the, uh, the uh, superior vestibular nerve, and you see the ambulated end of the posterior canal, which is, uh, which is innervated by the singular branch. So singular branch from inferior vestibular and superior vestibular. Um, don't forget these uh, two things, the endolymphatic duct and uh, what you can also see is, again, the back end of the superior and the up end of the posterior form the common cruise, which is an important landmark when you're doing trans um, If you're going from retro, uh, if you're going transmastoid, uh, temporal lobe, you expect the venal lobe, it's a, it's, it's a bit uh, small in this section. If you drill out the mastoid, then you're going to come to the mastoid antrum, uh, spinal henry, very important. This is where you're going to be drilling out. And you want to expose the sigmoid sinus, the seventh nerve facial in its mastoid segment. And ultimately, you're going to come here, expose the canals, and obviously the tympanic cavity uh, with the malleus in the incus. And what you're going to come across is above uh, the facial nerve, you have the facial biceps, and here you have the fossa incutus. And we're going to be talking about that uh, in a minute. Um, also the malleus and the promontory. Uh, this is if you uh, continue drilling, uh, this is all ENT above the tympanic cavity if you're doing anticrine treatments. That's not really uh, uh, anything we'll be dealing with now, but what is this? The, the only thing I, the, the only reason I put this image here is to ask you what this is, because it wasn't marked. What is what it's what what is this? So it's you know it's it's, it's a seventh nerve tympanic segment. So this can only be one thing. It's coming out of the facial nerve. It's going uh, into the tympanic cavity. No. What do they have? It's called a tympany. So once you drill out and you uh, you've uh, seen the uh, the semicircular canals and the labyrinth, 
you see above the facial nerve, the facial recess, because you're not going to be exposing the facial nerve immediately. It's usually being covered by a shell of bone, so you're eggshelling here. And then you see a couple of landmarks. Now, how you interpret uh, the semicircular canals? It's very simple. The posterior canal always wraps around the lateral canal. So once you see a canal wrapping around another canal, then you already know two of the three. So the yellow one you deduce. This is this always the posterior, this is always lateral, and this is superior. So you know this is uh, a floral middle fossa with tegmen. And why do we need to know this? Well, because on the downside of the lateral canal, that's where the facial nerve is coursing. So this is always important where you start drilling at the lateral canal. You always start on the upside, you never start drilling on the downside. And the superior semicircular canal, the other side, the labyrinthine side of the uh, facial nerve is forcing this way to make a genu ear. So you never start drilling on the uh, downside, you always start drilling here. And the common cruise is also um, an important landmark to help you. Now, once you know where the facial nerve is, you know where the facial recess is, and you also know the fascia in cutis, and you know that the pro short process of the incus always points to the seventh nerve. So once you've seen the incus in, in, in the tympanic cave, you always know where the facial nerve is because its short process always points to the tympanic segment of the facial nerve. I'm not going to insist for, on all the anatomic elements, but if you look through the facial recess, then you're going to be this, see the stapes uh, lying in the oval window. This is just drilling out of the canals, and uh, I think there are a lot of people that say if you if you um, uh, drill out the uh, superior and, and, and uh, lateral canals, uh, you can still save viewings if you plug them, uh, but if you drill the, uh, the, uh, canal, the uh, hearing is usually lost. Um, but I think most of them agree that once you've been drilling inside the labyrinth and you've opened the, uh, the membranous labyrinth, usually uh, uh, hearing is lost because of all the uh, damage that's, that's been done. Obviously, if you drill into the cochlea, then the, nothing's going to vibrate anymore, so it's, uh, the hearing's 100% uh, lost. And what you see here is also tensor tympani, the tendon and its insertion, the malleus, the external acoustic meatus, and here uh, you have the, the uh, tympanic membrane. Once you've done a mastoidectomy uh, with spinal penny uh, as uh, uh, on the front side, you can drill out the canals uh, one side at a time, and then you see Chopman's triangle uh, here at the side of uh, the sigmoid sinus. And then once you open, you see the vitrosal surface, and it's important that you open the, 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 the semicircular canals because you want to see the nerves inside of the internal acoustic meatus. Now once we're looking inside the middle fossa, then you have to uh, see the greater petrosal nerve first because you know it's going back to the geniculus ganglion. And for middle fossa approaches, it's always one of the most important um, aspects. So um, you know always where the geniculus ganglion is and you know uh, that the meato uh, uh, part of the facial nerve uh, ends here and then the, the uh, labyrinthine segment of the uh, facial nerve begins. So this is the first genu. Um, you see tympanic cavity, you know it courses uh, uh, under the lateral canal in its tympanic segment and then uh, makes another genu and goes down um, through the masper to the spinomaster foramen. So this is what we're uh, keeping in mind when we're doing a middle fossa approach. If you want to open the canal from uh, fundus to porous, that's very difficult because the nerves here are very uh, are very shallow and very attached to bone, so it's very difficult to open the dura. Uh, but if you look at the dura of the uh, pores of the meatus, it's uh, obviously much uh, simpler to drill here on each side and exhale this until you come on the dura. So that's why uh, you, the chance of injury, especially to the facial nerve, at the fundus of the meatus is uh, uh, a lot bigger than if you start drilling at the pores. Now, if you're doing a transcochlear approach, the first thing you're going to do, this is a uh, labyrinthine segment of the uh, of the seventh nerve, is you want to divide the greater petrosal nerve. If you do that, your patient will probably have um, uh, impaired lacrimation, but that usually resolves after three months. So what you want to do is you want to remove it from its um, from its place and do a, a facial transposition that usually leaves your patient with a house break on six after surgery, but it usually recovers to the three. I'm not 
I think a house breakdown six don't really ever recover to a house breakdown one. Um, and you see the cochlear nerve uh, uh, spreading inside the cochlea to the very small fine branches that we've talked about. And then you can drill out the cochlea and you can see a, a very wide approach. Obviously, again, if you look at Peter's bone from all the sides, it's an anterior relation to the infratemporal fossa, to the posterior fossa, the mastoid, and the semicircular canals as a short axis between all these important structures. That's why you're, doing, you're, you're using the labyrinth as the most important landmark, because this is the axis of all these anatomical uh, uh, structures and landmarks all the point. You see the petrous carotid here, again, geniculate ganglion, let's get oriented, uh, from video nerve, um, uh, greater uh, GSPM, uh, coursing above the petrous carotid, and obviously here at foramen lastrum, it's a uh, shine movement, and um, the cochlea, and uh, again the tegmen tympani, and uh, uh, the relationship with the meatus from the middle fossa. Uh, you just uh, drilling this out, and the posterior canal wraps around the lateral canal, and then the superior canal. You can come it from uh, to it from all the sides. And now we're going to do a uh, um, uh, uh, couple of uh, uh, questions of uh, what do you think? Uh, what do you think we are? What what have we done here? How do we get to this part? Anybody? We drill the mastoid, and what is this? Yeah. And which canal is this one? Yeah, it wraps around the lateral canal, and this is superior canal. And what is this? Facial recess. And this, what would this be then? Yeah, it's a facial nerve. Of course, in its mastoid um, segment to go to the style mastoid frame. So we've done here a wide approach. We're getting ready for the combined petrosal. Uh, you see the labyrinth. Um, and could you tell me what, where we drill into here? We drill into the cochlea. And here, where do we drill into here? This is the fundus of the meatus, okay? Uh, so you see seventh nerve, superior vestibular, inferior vestibular, cochlears underneath, intermedius, which sometimes has five to seven uh, uh, branches here. And where, uh, where did we drill into here? What is this? This is all to try to orient ourselves in three dimensions because we're coming, this is from posterior fossa, you drill out the meatus, and where do you come into if you keep drilling? You don't stop at the fundus. What, what will we drill into? Vestibule. This is vestibule. And if you drill again, even more, then you uncover the canals. And can anybody tell me which nerve this one is? Yeah, superior vestibular. And this would be, what would this be? At the fundus of the meatus. It's Bill's bar. Now, combined petrosal approach, you need a very wide opening, about six centimeters above the trachis and uh, about uh, two centimeters by, uh, behind the asterion. You place two fingers uh, behind the ear and you can approximate where the asterion is. Uh, the asterion is a pretty good um, uh, orientation of where the transverse sigma injunction is. So you want to uh, include that in your uh, approach. Uh, this root, the posterior root of zygoma, spine of Henley, Mastoid, so all these structures you have to include. Um, you uh, uh, take out usually a vascularized pericranial graft because I agree with Christina, sometimes you have to uh, uh, close the skull base properly as we get uh, CSF fistula. Uh, you see the spinous on the back side and the temporalis. Um, and we've drilled into the mastoid here, so we've performed the mastoidectomy. And what is this? Yeah, some circular canals. Now what we want to do is um, you want to drill um, some very uh, shallow grooves here because right? this is sigmoid sinus and uh, afterwards you want to do a wide craniotomy about five centimeters above uh, posterior root of zygoma and uh, uh, about two centimeters uh, behind asterion. Uh, these uh, uh, 
ridges of bone which are preventing you. Where are we here? Is this middle of posterior fossa? Yeah, it's middle fossa. So these uh, annoying jugae of bone, you have to drill them out to make a flat approach. Um, and what is this? What, what, what section is this? It's the petrous apex. You recognize GSPN here, V3, uh, left semicircular canal, and the petrous ridge. So you have to drill this out. And then you, um, if Fukushima prefers a Y incision of uh, bone, Hakuba, before him, that was also a Japanese neurosurgeon who will do um, the incision otherwise, but if you don't do it like this, then it'll be very difficult to close, even with a vascularized pericranial graft. So what are we doing here? What is this? This structure, this big uh, fiber structure. It's a tentorium, so we're trying to detach the tentorium. Tentorium detection is essential for a combined tentorial approach. If you don't do that, then you get no access to the brainstem and to peel off the tumor from the brainstem. And what is this? Trochlear nerve. And once you divide all the way to the superior petrosal sinus, you want to do you want to do a fin-like. Uh, detachment of the tentorium. So you see fourth nerve. It's usually engulfed in the tumor, sometimes the abducens as well. What is this? So the fourth nerve runs lateral to it, but in a very close relationship. What is this? And it splits into two at the side of the, uh, uh, of the uh, mesencephalon. It's the SCA. It splits into a rostrum and caudal trunk. And what is this? Posterior cerebral artery. So we've detached the tentorium, and here we're going to open the trigeminal fibrous ring at the posterior side of the sinus cavernosus. We've talked about that the last time. So you see here uh, fifth nerve, and now we've going we're going down and we've opened the dura. So what do we see here? A couple of nerves, but which which are these? These two. They're they're pretty big and intimately related. They're coming from um, they come from brainstem to go to labyrinth. Where which are they? Yeah, seven and eight. So this is it's nine, ten, eleven. And what is this? It's a bit it's a bit of a trick question because you know it, these are the inferior na cranial nerves. So you think okay, this must be pica. The pica doesn't really run here. This is ica, which loops above and between first seven and eight, and then running inside the meatus, and then looping above um, the inferior uh, cranial nerves. So detachment, uh, uh, trigeminal nerve, all these steps, huh? so open the dura, uh, trigeminal fibrous ring detachment, um, division of the tentorium, all thought out by Fukushima in his article about the uh, combined pitocal approach. Um, so you follow uh, fourth <coughs> nerve, Ganglion, and this is a pretty interesting. Uh, uh, this is a pretty interesting uh, uh, dissection because what, what do you think this is? What, where are we going to? So this is. Try to imagine that from here we go a little bit further on to detach, and what do we find here? Basilar. But if we go even further, this is. Even more interesting. What is this? It's a big, it's a very, very, very big um, vessel, and this is also a very, very, very big vessel. So this would be, but this is anterior. This is carotid. This is basilar. So we're at the space between the two. And what would this be? It's going behind to come to the posterior cerebral artery, posterior communicating, anterior choroidal. We're going to be talking about it uh, in the uh, surprise presentation. What do you think this is? Very interesting because you never see it from here. This is the pituitary stalk. So once you've opened this all up, you see this amazing, huge uh, approach to the um, whole anterolateral side of the brainstem with all the structures in. Uh, Ica, 8, 9, 10, 11, uh, I guess here in the anglion, um, fourth nerve all detached and obviously with the hearing intact. Thanks.